57% of Republicans say the number of dead is acceptable at 170 thousand people if one thing has become clear during this week of the republican national convention it's that the republican party and its supporters will say and believe anything i'm going to break down here some incredible data about what republicans believe about the coronavirus and trump's response to it first i want to show you this clip with uh, daniel dale on uh, CNN. So Daniel Dale is the, the fact checker here. I believe he's a CNN fact checker. Um, he used to work for the uh, Toronto Star. But uh, Daniel Dale here talking with Anderson Cooper about just the sheer amount of lies. And really, look, uh, I've been covering the RNC every night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, I'm not covering it Thursday, but the amount of lies, it, it's, it's impossible to follow. He must have, I assume here, that he that Daniel Dale has people working for him. Because there is no way, I mean, every single speech, practically every sentence, there is a lie or hyperbole that's treated as fact. Every single speech is completely insane. So, I'm going to play this clip here, and uh, Daniel Dale goes over some of the lies. Anderson, there's just so much dishonesty and inaccuracy at this convention, it's hard for me to know where to start. And it's not just big things like this broad revisionism on the response to the pandemic. It's little inaccuracy, inaccuracy, carelessness. We had someone, Laura Trump, cite a fake Abraham Lincoln quote tonight. A number of tonight's false claims came from the vice president, Mike Pence. He repeated one of Trump's own favorite lies. He said that because of them, we now have veterans' choice. As I've said over and over, Obama signed that choice law in 2014. Trump signed a 2018 law that modified and expanded the choice program, but did not create it. Pence boasted twice that Trump had, quote, suspended all travel from China. He didn't. He imposed a partial travel restriction that contained multiple exemptions. Tens of thousands of people, Anderson, kept coming over after that. Pence said again that Biden wants, quote, open borders. I know this is common conservative of rhetoric, but it's just wrong. Biden does not support completely unrestricted migration. Now, Pence and others describe Trump's coronavirus response as a smashing success. And most experts we know say that's not at all true. But I think it's also notable how speakers like Laura Trump pretend that the pandemic did not happen at all. She said that 4.3 million new jobs have been created for women. Well, it was a gain of about 4 million since January 2017 as of March. But then we had a crash. And as of July, women have lost a net over 3 million jobs during Trump's presidency. We also heard more wildly inaccurate attempts to smear Democrats as extremists. We had Burgess Owens, a Utah congressional candidate, said that popular members of Congress promote the same socialism my father fought against in World War II. The U.S. wasn't fighting any actual socialism in World War II. The Nazis called themselves National Socialists. They weren't anything like Bernie Sanders, who, by the way, had family members killed in the Holocaust. They were ultra-right, genocidal, totalitarian. We had C Congresswoman Elise Stefanik call Trump's impeachment illegal. Come on, it's legal. Impeachment is in the Constitution. And like Trump himself, we had Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany claiming that Trump stands by Americans with pre-existing conditions. Look, Trump has repeatedly tried to get bills passed to weaken Obamacare's protections for people with pre-existing conditions, and he's currently in court fighting to get the entirety of Obamacare overturned. Now, he has promised some sort of executive order protecting people, but it hasn't come yet, and Anderson, that certainly doesn't change his history on the subject. All right, so uh, Daniel Dale there barely taking a breath as he goes through two minutes of lies from the RNC. Now... I want to uh, highlight just one here, one that's not really important, but I was curious what it was, and I thought you may be curious too. That's the Laura Trump lie about the Abraham Lincoln quote. So what quote was that? So uh, when speaking at the RNC, it appears she got the line from a Facebook meme, <laughs> as the former president never uttered the phrase. Quote, Abraham Lincoln once famously said, America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves, Mrs. Trump said who is married to Donald Trump's second son, Eric Trump. That is not a Lincoln quote. <laughs> she got it from a Facebook meme, as many conservatives do with their misinformation. So this, this entire convention has really been about how much bullshit will Republican voters accept and just believe as fact. And I'll, I will show you how far it gets with these voters. So this is a recent poll from CBS. Number of U.S. deaths from coronavirus has been dot, dot, dot. 
acceptable or not acceptable? Well, according to 50% of Republicans, it's been acceptable. The deaths, I'll show you this graph later, but the deaths are at 177,000. And as of taking this, uh, as of this, this poll, I believe it was 175. So 175,000 deaths is acceptable to Republicans. Now, this also shows you the complete lack of information when it comes to what is happening outside their own borders. Because again, I'll get to this later as well, because I want to dive more into it. But you compare daily new confirmed COVID-19 cases per million people. This is the rolling seven-day average. This is per capita, so it's all relative here. You compare what the U.S. has experienced to every other, I mean, I have several countries here, but you can go here, add your own countries. I always link to everything below the video under sources, so you can check out this graph yourself. But, um, you know, compared to South Korea, Australia, Canada, even the UK, where they have a conservative government there, the massive difference. So, in what world is this acceptable? In the world of lies, in the world of the GOP, where facts simply don't enter. Now, of course, like anyone that watches my channel knows I criticize um, Democrats all the time, but this is next level BS. I do think, to point this out, I, I do think that, say, uh, Obama was in charge and this happened, um, you know, these amount of deaths happened. There definitely would be a contingent of Democrats that also would think everything's fine. Oh, Obama has it under control, but it would be nowhere, nowhere near what this number is with Republicans. Nowhere near. And you know that because you know the, the amount of bullshit that comes out of these people's mouths. You see it during the RNC. It is completely insane. Democrats want to destroy the country. Like, just complete... Or, Biden's a socialist, <laughs> like complete insanity that has no basis in reality whatsoever. But it's the kind of BS they spew constantly. Let me show you some reactions to uh, the fact here that Republicans are perfectly okay with these deaths. Andrea Junker here tweets out, the 57% of Republicans who think the 180,000 COVID-19 deaths are acceptable are the same who thought two Ebola deaths or four Benghazi deaths were too many. Exactly. Keith Boykin here, 57% of Republicans were lying when they yelled all lives matter. So, yeah, this this goes to show you just in terms of the conservative mindset, it's just purely absorbing what they're told, whether it's through Fox News, whether it's through uh, OAN, the the uh, the network that kisses, that not only just kisses Trump's ass, but also shines it afterwards. I mean, there are a number of these conservative outlets, whether on television or online, that just constantly spew talking points and misinformation. And these people just eat it up. Question nothing. Don't bother looking outside their own borders. Don't see how other countries are doing. Nothing at all. They just believe the lies they're told. And the, and for them, politics is more of a sport. It's more of this, this uh, cultural phenomenon as opposed to it being something that actually impacts people's lives. Now, <laughs> GOP chairwoman uh, Ronna McDaniel here responded to this poll, and I want to uh, play for you her reaction to this. CBS News has a battleground tracker out, and it's showing a big divide between how Republicans view the U.S. response to the coronavirus and how the majority of voters see it. 73% of Republicans say it's going well. 38% of all voters say it's going well by comparison. Then 57% of Republicans say the number of dead is acceptable at 170 thousand people. 33% of independents say it's acceptable, just 10% of Democrats. How could that number be acceptable? And why is there such a big divide between how Republicans see it and how the majority of people do? Well, I think that is a really unfair poll. And, and of course, there is nobody in this country, there is nobody 
starting with the president of the United States, who wants to see people uh, pass away from this global pandemic that came here from China, not being honest, from the WHO failing in their one duty, their one duty to identify a pandemic, and they failed the global community. But let's be honest, Republicans do, want, do not want to see people suffering from this pandemic. We have all been affected by this. This is not a Republican or Democrat issue. So we you say that Democrats number is acceptable? No, you of course not, Margaret. This is a global pandemic. Nobody wants to see somebody die from this. I have, fr have had friends die from this. This is not something people want, but the president's response has saved lives. All right, there is too much bullshit there. <laughs> like I was saying earlier, they just spew whatever the hell they want. Ronna McDaniel trying to make it sound like this is a, a, a worldwide issue. That, oh, it's the, the fault of the WHO, that, you know, no country has it under control, nobody has it, uh, no one has the, the correct response to this, yeah, except when you look at the actual facts. They're a little inconvenient. Again, it's all here. Like, do we really have to pretend? Like, it's all here. One country is the outlier. And the only other country that comes close with the U.S., let me see where they are because I haven't checked recently, is Brazil. And guess what? They're also run by a neo-fascist. So here you go. Two neo-fascists right here. Neo-fascist Trump, neo-fascist Jair uh, Bolsonaro. Right there. This is the result of it. Two leaders that don't care at all about their people. This is what happens. And as I said earlier, look, the U.K., run by a conservative government, but it's not neo-fascist. It truly is unbelievable and stunning in terms of what Republicans will believe. And I wish I had some answers. I wish I, I, I knew what to do to inform these people. But if you're in this far, I really don't know how to pull you out. It has to be somebody that's in your life that, that you know, uh, or say it's like, a, say it's your father who, who believes this BS. It has to be someone that he trusts to pull him out. It's not going to be me. It's not going to be, you know, anybody else on television that isn't part of his uh, existing framework. It's going to be someone close to him that, you know, bits and pieces, maybe plants some seeds here and there and tries to, you know, grow some information in, in the man's brain. But... Ultimately, there are no easy ways to, to take these people back and, and shake them into reality. It's brainwashing is what it is. And as I said a million times, yes, this is not just a GOP issue. Democrats are facing a pandemic right now and are not offering Medicare for all. To look at this pandemic and still not understand the need for a single-payer system where you have millions of people losing their health care because they lost their job, because in America, many people have their health care tied to their employer, a completely insane system to not look outside your own borders and see every other country has some form of universal health care and try and push for that is, is, again, also insane. But as I said, this is next level. This, this is next level. 